Add a little bit of extra. Oh no! It went in the frame. So today I'm back working on my 1970 Dodge Challenger. I installed a modern Hemi into this guy, a 5.7 and a six speed manual transmission. And I'm getting ready to bring this guy to a road course racetrack to race against my 1995 Nissan 300ZX. This guy obviously dominated the 300ZX on the drag strip. ZX but I think the opposite is gonna be true on this time attack road course racetrack. But one of my goals for this build was to get this guy to handle as good as it can. And it's actually surprisingly good at handling uh, for a 50 year old muscle car. I have a set of Bilstein shocks on this thing. I have tubular front control arms. I have upgraded performance oriented uh, springs and torsion bars, upgraded big brakes, and an upgraded front sway bar. And the very last upgrade that I wanna to do to this guy before bringing it to the track is to install a rear sway bar. And I actually bought this guy quite a long time ago, as you can see by the box, um, probably over a year ago, but I never got around to installing it. All right, let's get to it. So we got this guy started here, got these bushings um, on the brackets lubricated. And the idea here is to bolt this guy to the axle, something like this. So um, this thing will bolt to the axle and then these two ends will bolt to the frame somewhere. So I think I'm gonna go ahead and just put this U-bolt over that. And I think the next step will be bolting on this sway bar. All right, I got these two guys bolted on there. Um, very, very easy so far. You just kind of have to bolt this up onto the axle. I suppose I had to put some effort into making this straight, um, but that should be pretty easy. And these things pivot right up to the edge of the frame here. So I think the idea next is to drill a couple holes here, you know, straight through the frame right there. And uh, we'll be in business, I think. I, uh, I went ahead and put this thing back down on its weight because I realized that there's an important measurement to be made here <laughs> before jacking up the car. And that's basically getting all of these end links square. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark a couple holes up there to drill through my subframe right up somewhere there, um, up there. And once I have those holes drilled, I think we'll be good to jack this back up so I can crawl under and we'll do some, uh, we'll do some final installation. All right, um, I got my holes marked on both sides. It's definitely not, it's a, it was definitely very hard to get this thing marked and I'm not uh, super, super confident with, with the holes, but I think I'm just gonna have to bolt it in there and, and this seems pretty close. We got these holes drilled out here. Um, I had to kind of bend a pinch weld. I'll bend it back, it'll be okay. But uh, we got a pretty good hole through the frame now. You can see the other side. So the next thing is to get the spacer in here, which came out absolutely perfectly sized. Um, probably even we'll have to tap it in a little, oh, there we go. Um, 
And uh, they did add a little bit of extra. Oh no. It went in the frame. Uh, okay, well, I just threw it in the frame, <laughs> but they do give us extra, I think two extra ones, um, probably for that exact reason. So um, I can't do that again. That's really important. <laughs> And uh, we'll put this guy in there, we'll mark the extra material and go ahead and like uh, cut it off with the grinder. Okay, well, I guess I did make a mistake when I dropped that spacer in there, this little guy here, um, because these are not the frame spacers. Um, they are a little bit too short. These guys are the frame spacers that go in there. So um, so I do need all four of these to go into these end link things here. I thought that these were the two frame spacers and that they were nice and gave us extras, but I guess that's not the case. And I need to fish this thing out of there and it's gonna be very difficult because this thing barely fits through the hole. So um, I got my magnet and I did get a hold of it in there. Um, so I'm going to have to kind of finagle it back through this hole somehow. Um, yeah, wish me luck. <laughs> oh, there you go. Oh, oh, no. You should have dropped the, uh, the scraper in there. I should have. It's okay. Yeah, there's a scraper. Yeah, if you can just kind of poke at things there and you'll hit the edge of it at some point. Okay, I feel that. Little, uh, give it some few more taps maybe. <laughs> what a mission. <laughs> All right, I got this thing out of there. Uh, unbelievably, I can't believe I fished this thing out of the frame and through that hole. And uh, that was a lucky break for sure. <laughs> All right, I got this real spacer, the correct spacer in here, and there is a lot of extra material there, so um, I'll have to pull this guy off. I guess mark it, pull this guy off, and give it a little trim with the cutoff wheel. All right, I got my spacers cut, so Yes, the last, oh yeah. <laughs> the, the last step is to carefully place this guy in there, uh, bolts up this sway bar, and I think that is just about it. side bolts it in okay. It actually got pretty close to the floor and pretty close to the exhaust, but I think we're good as far as clearance goes. Um, on this side, unfortunately, um, the issue is with the e-brake cables. So this thing really just hits right there. And uh, this particularly this top cable, I guess both cables, because um, this thing needs to just lay right on here. So, so I think the plan is gonna be to cut this guy right there and just bend this guy in. So these are pointed more inward and definitely won't have any effect on the e-brake cables and that should give us enough clearance. All right, I got this uh, bracket bent out a little bit so this should be pretty good to clear. Um, I might go ahead and throw something on there to make sure to move this guy out of the way but we'll see where this end link squishes down when it's all said and done, because that rubber um, bushing in there will squish down probably quite a bit. But that's it, everything is bolted together. Um, everything looks pretty good. So I guess the last step is to torque everything down to 40 foot pounds, and that's it. I think we're done. Uh, good, that's good. Glad to be finished. There it is.
Yes. Alright, there we go. Torque's down, everything's good. The car is technically on its weight. I know that that's something you're supposed to do when, when the car is on its full loaded suspension. So I guess we'll throw these wheels back on here and uh, take it for a spin. Thank you. 